Hallelujah. Father, we thank you, Lord. We bless your name forevermore. Because you are raising a generation of praise. A generation of God seekers. And this generation will not fail. We won't give up on our generation. We will rise. We will take our place. Blessed be your name. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the light of your word. Thank you for upholding us by your word and strengthening us and enlarging our capacity. Blessed be your name forevermore. In the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Shall we have our seats? God bless you. Hallelujah. Let's celebrate the children choir. God bless you. Your generation will praise the Lord forever. Amen. Amen. Romans chapter 12. From verse 9 to 13. Romans chapter 12. The title of our message is Stay Hot for God. Stay Hot for God. I want somebody to say, Stay Hot for God. Tell somebody beside you, Stay Hot for God. Hallelujah. Amen. As people of God, that have been begotten to a lively hope through the resurrection of Christ from the dead. We have a mandate and a, a task or responsibility to always keep the flow of God's presence to maintain the flow of the presence of God to remain in God's presence. And um, you will agree with me that God will not condone um, a cold stove environment. The Holy Spirit cannot you know, entertain a cold stove environment whereby everything is just cold and every kind of um, fly will just be flying around and anything goes kind of environment. God will not permit such around him. Amen. 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 So, having been born or begotten of the Father, we are the begotten of the Father. So having, Bible says, being born again, not of the corruptible seed, but of the incorruptible seed, which is the word of God. So being born by the word and by the spirit of God, we have to maintain that flow. We cannot be born of the spirit and be maintained by the flesh. We cannot be born of the spirit of God and remain cold as if nothing has happened in our lives. The old life will still continue. No, that's not possible. Hallelujah. I wanted to chat somebody and say, stay hot for God. Hallelujah. So we have a God-given task to keep the flow. To keep the fire burning and not to grieve the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, grieve not the Holy Spirit by whom you are sealed until the day of redemption. Like I said earlier, the Holy Spirit will not tolerate a cold, an environment of coldness where 
sin or sinfulness is the order of the day where people can live freely and just do whatever they like and um, cast off restraint. That's what we call liberty sometimes. It's not liberty. The liberty in the spirit is that situation that allows us to enjoy God's presence and to be who and what God has ordained us to be, to walk in the flow and in the fullness of God's blessing, to release the gifts and the manifestation of the Holy Spirit for the profiting of the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's liberty. Not permission or opportunity to cast off restraint and become ungovernable. No, that's not liberty in the spirit. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So, I pray that the Lord will stir up a new standard in us in this season as on today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And may we be totally consumed, eaten up by the zeal of the house of the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In John chapter 2 verse 17 and um, Psalm 69 verse 9, the zeal of the house of the Lord has consumed me. You can just write it down. You don't need to read it. Praise the Lord. Looking at the text for today, I want to see if we can go through them one after the other as the Lord permits me. Stay hot for God. And, um, Romans chapter 12. You know, um, you will understand this flow better like I usually say. It will make more sense if you read it from verse 1. So, you know, if you read it from verse 1, where Apostle Paul was saying, I beseech you, brethren, therefore, so of course, you know, that's also taking a cue from the previous verse, which is the last verse of chapter 11, but we are not going to go into all that. I beseech you by the mercies of the Lord, brethren, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Hallelujah. A living sacrifice which is holy and acceptable unto God, which is a, your reasonable service. Amen. 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 So let me just rush down to verse 9. Let me face strictly what we have for today. Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. So it all starts with love. A burning desire in service in our ministry in everything that has to do with God between us and God and even in the law in the to the world around us it all starts with love i want you to tell somebody it all starts with love it all starts with love so everything revolves around love Everything. In fulfilling my destiny, in running my course, because definitely, if I have to live or live or fulfill life and make something 
good, significant, out of life, it must affect at least one person. Not just a world that is centered around me will never affect anybody and it's, it's a meaningless life at the end of the day. So if it's going to affect at least one person, definitely the God factor must be set in. And everything has to do with love. Amen. 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 And you know what? Just like the Bible said, God is love. So if you don't know God, you don't know love. People talk about, it amazes me. We talk so much about love. We talk so much, but we do less. Oh, let's just love. Let's love. It's not what, it's not, love is not, I say it, when it is, when there is too much talk about something, watch it. People are not, that's the, that's the least thing that people pay attention. That's the, what they pay the least attention to. Hallelujah. So the love of God should be the motivation, the driving force for everything that we do. So it says, let love be without dissimulation. That is, let, God, let love be with sincerity. Let love be unfeigned. Let it be genuine. And I checked up the word dissimulation in the dictionary. It's not just say the Lord. Though. In the dictionary, it says pretense. So our love should be without pretense. So dissimulation, another word for dissimulation, deceit, dishonesty, guile, double dealing, or double mindedness. Some people are very, you know, <laughs> very smart, very skillful in doing that. You see them looking like this. You think they are looking there. In your what do they call them? Ah, you get it. I will bad on be any warrior. You know? Very, very. Another word for it is fraud or scam. And another word for it, which is very popular in Nigeria, lie. And you know when we say lie, <laughs> you don't want to go there. That's a big word in Nigeria today. I don't, how many of you understand what I'm talking about? Okay. So, let love be without dissimulation, without eye service. And it says, abhor that which is evil. To abhor is to detest, to despise, to hate, to keep away from something or to stay away from something. So he said, stay away from that which is evil and cleave or cling hold on fastly to that which is good so this takes a so love is something that you practice it takes a conscious effort love unto god is something that you how can i do this thing and sin against god Thank God for grace. Thank God for the help of the Holy Spirit. Thank God for all those things. But you will still take the responsibility to practice love. Yes, it takes the help of God. But you and I must be willing to be helped. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says, he said, you have loved righteousness and you have hated iniquity. Psalm 45 verse 9. And also Hebrews, the same thing. He was talking about Jesus. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 9. Sorry, Psalm 45 verse 7. You know, I throne, O Lord, is forever. Your scepter is the scepter of righteousness. You have loved righteousness. And you have hated iniquity. Therefore, thy God, even thy God, has ordained you or anointed you with the oil of gladness. Psalm 45 verse 7. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 9. So, love is very, very pivotal to our service and our staying or standing in the presence of God. Commanding the presence of God requires genuine love that is heart born born out of a genuine heart. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The Bible says, let everything, let all your things be done in love. 1 Corinthians chapter 16 verse 14. The Amplified Version puts it this way. It says, let everything you do be motivated and inspired by God's love. Everything, everything in relating with my customers as a business person. You know, some people set up business in order to all because they want to make money, which is very good. But they don't care. It, they don't care how they make the money. I say this. Profitability is very good. But profiteering is not necessarily the will of God. Profitability is making money and, you know, making profit. A win-win situation whereby your business grows, your customers are doing well, everybody is doing well. And you are also making, you are, you, are, you are deploying solution and making life better for people. Profiteering means that you are the one winning and your customers, your staff and everybody is groaning. That's not good. That's not kingdom. That's not the kingdom order. You can make money, but it's not, it's a cost. That's not the God ordained way. If there is anybody treading that path, stop. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let everything be done in love. Amen. 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 I want you to tell somebody about that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. Amen. Amen. And I'll face somebody else. Say, let everything you do be done in love. Love without deceit. Love without envy love without dishonesty hallelujah i pray god will bless us in the mighty name of jesus christ amen and going further he says be kindly affectioned still talking about love to one another be kindly affectionate or affection one to another with brotherly love. 
You know, I've said this over and over. That word, brotherhood, I think the people from the other side understand this much better than we do in the church. They take care of their brothers. You know, that word, they, they even practice it better than we do. Be your brother's keeper. We will, rather than be our brother's keeper, we be our, we become our brother's killer. You become your brother's killer, your sister's killer. Rather than nurse the wounded, we afflict the wounded. Sometimes in the church, we mourn when people are rejoicing. And we rejoice when people are mourning. That should not be heard. In the, look at all what is happening. The case of the church should not be like that which uh, Balaam said to Balak. He said, you see these people, just leave them. You can't fight them. But you know what? What will kill them, what will destroy them is in them. Just, but it's just uh, a different dimension. He said, don't worry, just set your girls loose among them. But this time around, uh, the enemy will say, no, don't worry, don't worry. What, what will destroy them is not an explosion. It won't come from outside. It's an implosion. It's within them. Just set them among themselves against one another and let them be busy fighting one another. And they will be attacking one another. Where brotherly love is supposed to reign. I pray that every yoke, every body of disunity in the body of Christ be broken as on today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And in the church of God, everywhere in our assembly and not just here alone, everywhere in the church, every spirit of discord, every spirit of disunity, I pray the Lord will break it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. You know, Die vision. Division means die. It will always kill every, every vision. People will not be able to operate in synergy. When one is supposed to be chasing a thousand, two chasing ten thousands, and look at it in that degree of magnitude. But when there is division, we are not coordinated. I pray God will help us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So he said, let brotherly love dwell among us. And you know, going further, he said, in honor, preferring one another. What does this tell me? You prefer, he said, in, in, in another translation, making preference one to another. You know our standard, we even say it, we quote it. We quote the Bible upside down. You know, the Bible did not say you should love your neighbor more than yourself. The Bible said love your neighbor as yourself. Already when you are, you are already taking a stand of selfishness, self-centeredness, he said, in honor, taking preference one to another. That is, preferring one to another. Preferring somebody. That is, there are times when you have to trade your comfort for the sake of a brother. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. John chapter 13 verse 34. A new commandment I give unto you. What is new in that commandment? It's not entirely new. But the newness in that commandment is that as I, you know the Bible had said it was written in Leviticus. Love your neighbor as yourself. But there is an upgrade system. Not just as yourself because there are times that you don't even love yourself. So not just as yourself, but as I have loved you. Hallelujah. He said, as I have loved you, so you should love one another. So must you. So it's not even, it's not even uh, admonition. It's a commandment. So love is not love until, ha, ah, Jesus help me. So, love is something that it involves walking in the spirit. The sovereignty of God and the responsibility of man making a legal tender. It's a two-way thing, two sides of a coin. If I try to practice love outside God, I might be shortchanging the process. If I try to help a man that God is training, God is putting him through a process, and I'm trying to take him out of that process, that's not love. I'm killing him. I hope I'm not confusing somebody here. Please. So that somebody will not live here and say, Pastor, I said we should not help people. Please don't get me wrong. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want you to tell somebody, walk in love. Walk in the spirit. Stay in God's presence. So except we know God, we cannot practice love. In essence, that's all what we are trying to say. That's why Apostle Paul said, look, hey, it doesn't matter. I can give. Give everything I have. At the end of the day, and God will say, oh, is that all? That's not love. Because the motive for giving, actually, the reason, the purpose, the intent of the heart, God looks into all that. He checks all those things. I pray God will help us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So, not just as yourself, but as I have loved you. The mandate is not just to love as we want to. You know, you and I, if we had our way, we would only love people that are nice to us. Uh, we would only love people that we have, you know, good relationship, good rapport with. But that's not God's command. He says, even people that despitefully use you, people that despise you, people that persecute you, sometimes you, it's, a, it's a very hard nut to crack. You know this person. <laughs> you know, ah, it's very hard. Sometimes you get, you know, you... you, you you get that impression, that thing is impressed upon your heart. Begin to intercede for this person. Ah, this person, Abba, Lord. This person don't like my face at all. Sometimes you even need to reach out to such people in love. And you'll be like, wow. But yes, you are being compelled by the spirit of God. 
that's not. Hallelujah. Praise, Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And um, from there, we move on to verse 11. And, okay, it says, Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. I'm going to stay here. I don't know if time permits me, I'll go for that. If not, I'll just stop here. And we can read up the remaining. And if the Lord permits, maybe some other time we we'll look at it. So he said, not being slothful in business. Slothful in business. So the word slothful means laziness. Lazy. Sluggish, lagging behind. <laughs> in the business, uh, not uh, I, I. I remember in those days, in my office, we used to call it faffing. Why are you faffing around? No, sluggish, not being slothful. In business, there is a difference between business and busyness. Both involve activities, but one will generate, you know, product, good product, good things, good result. The other we generate nothing or even you know counter productivity proverbs chapter 12 i learned another um, definition of laziness there proverbs chapter 12 verse 27 he said the lazy man he actually goes hunting. I thought the lazy man, you know, was that man. Yes, the Bible also talks about that. That will not go out. The Bible talks about that too. But there's another dimension to it. Proverbs 12, 27. It says that the slothful man roasts. Sorry. He does not roast that which he took in hunting. But the substance of a diligent man is precious. I would have loved to read this in one or two other translations for us. If you have that, you can check it up or read it up later in two, three or more uh, different translations. So the lazy man will actually go out. He will start something. He will start a business. He will start a job. He will start something. He will enroll in service. He will start a course. But he will never see through. Start a project. He will not see to the end of it. From there, he will jump to another thing. Join a department. Halfway, he will jump out. Start, you know, something. Always starting. They, they can start. They have that energy. But they will not finish. They will not bring it to the desired end. They don't have that stamina, that character to stay true. Just like we heard the other time when, you know, persecution... Um, hostility and everything begins to come. Uh, affliction, trial. In the process of building a career, for instance, you go through a lot of emotional stress. You go through, sometimes you work, you work under a difficult boss. Too demanding and everything. 
a diligent man will stay true because he will know that look there is light behind but a lazy man will say look look I can I can take all this man what are you telling me it doesn't have jack how can they tell me to go and buy food I'm here to work man oh boy don't you know me? I'm a graduate of so so. So? Who are you? Lack of character to stay true. Hallelujah. Slothful. He can jump out, he can walk out of even marriage. And not just a man, even woman. Say, look, I can't take shit from any man. You would take shit, you go take her rub body. <laughs> that will not be your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to tell somebody, don't be slothful. Stay true. Stay true. Yes. So, he said, not being slothful in business because business is something that God has committed into your hands that business is your occup your God given occupation it could be ministry it could be career it could be anything whatsoever your hand find it to do do it diligently amen I won't be able to stay. Uh, let, let me because I have to move on because of time. So, you see, we 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 are. I, I try to build a flow. You start with love. Everything you do is centered around God. So from there, everything, career, family. Everything, business, relationship, whatever ship you are involved in, companionship, whatever, friendship, everything. But everything is centered around God. So that you are not doing what you are doing. You are not involved in whatever ship you are involved in out of a wrong motivation or else you suffer a shipwreck. So God is the center point of everything. So from there, you bring it to your relationship. First of all, your relationship with God. Then, your relationship with people. Being uh, affectionate one to another. Preferring, it is the love of God that compels you to do that. Preferring one another. You see, people that really build wealth, go and check it. I think I saw something yesterday, maybe, ah, I don't know where I saw that, maybe on CNN or something. Microsoft now the most, now I don't really like talking about all this, the most valued uh, company. What do they do? Service. Yes, there can be another side to it, Bill Gates, and I don't want to go into all that drama. But as long as you keep powering up how to make life better for other people, how can every home have a system, for example, you know, and all those, you would always be productive. You will always be relevant. And it's not just about I, me, myself, what I would chop, 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 you know. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Okay. There's another man. I think um, I, there was a book I read many years ago. Ah, the Walmart, the Walmart way or something. Uh, it was written about Sam Walton, the owner, the founder of Walmart. He started a retail business. And today, if you check, how many years after, even though that's not our goal, 
how many years after? The man had been gone many years, but his children, grandchildren, they are among, you know, the about first 20 or 30 richest people in the world. About three or four of them, you find them that this one Walton, this one Walton, connected to one man that just started something. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So let everything be centered around God and then you, you bring that relationship of love unto God to the world around you. Then, said not being slothful in business that which you are doing then now he said fervent in the spirit passionate the word fervent means being passionate intense profound dedicated burning with desire fervent in the spirit Staying aglow, glowing in the spirit. Keeping the flow of the spirit of God. Bible says we have this treasure in human vessel. You know, you carry something. As a child of God, you carry something. Don't let the enemy deceive you. Every one of us carries something, a treasure within. So it is your responsibility to unlock that treasure. Says we, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. We have this treasure in earthen vessel that the excellency of power may be of God and not of man. So that is, there is something that the world needs that you carry. You have to locate it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Fervent in the spirit, serving the Lord. Serving the Lord enthusiastically. Staying hot in the presence of God. So it starts with love. Because without love, everything will run aground. Without love, everything will be done with the wrongest mindset, the wrongest perception. The motive, everything will be wrong. At the end of the day, we will just be doing something that we, do, you know, sometimes we can even be working against God, all in the name of service. So that's why I said, look, first of all, present yourself as a living sacrifice, which is holy and acceptable unto God. So if your life is acceptable unto God, your service definitely will be acceptable unto him. I pray that the grace and the power to maintain the flow of God's presence, the Lord will grant unto us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Anything that will not um, command the presence of God that will keep the Holy Spirit away from us or that will grieve him, may we not lay our hands unto such in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Henceforth, we will not grieve the Spirit. The Spirit of God will compel you and will instruct you in the way of the Lord and um, will inspire 
and quicken the word in you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And he will whisper to you at all times. The Bible says you will hear a voice behind you instructing you in the way. Say, look, this is the way. Walk in it. This will be your portion in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The grace and the power to maintain the flow, the fire, the flame, the presence of the spirit the Lord releases upon us in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You will not live an ordinary life. Amen. As from today, you will command a God-ordained lifestyle. Amen. You will be a shining light. Amen. You will be a burning light. Amen. You will be a burning lamp. Amen. The Lord will keep you burning. Amen. You will not burn off like chaff. In the name of the Father, amen. and of the Son, amen. and of the Holy Spirit, amen. shout amen. amen. We can do better.